Okay, so thank you for having me here today. Um, it's a pleasure to see you all. Um, and I thank you to Dr. Yojana for inviting me. Um, so today I was asked to perhaps talk a few words on uh, how to translate suttas and how to study from the suttas, uh, how to uh, go back to the original Buddha Vachana. Uh, as it is uh, preserved in the Pali Canon, and it's uh, it's quite a pleasure for me to be to be here at the Pali Department uh, and share this dhamma with all of you. Uh, this this love for Pali, the language of the Buddha. Should I? Okay, there's no translation today. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> so I would perhaps invite everybody to start with uh, Namo Tassa. Let's all recite Namo Tassa together three times. Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambuddhasa Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambuddhasa Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambuddhasa I spent last year uh, all of last year in Sri Lanka, in the jungle, and uh, I found this uh, wonderful forest monastery, um, which I was feeling very drawn to. Uh, and the reason for that it was that there was a monk called Nyana Deepa Bhante, uh, who was a renowned um, monk originally from Denmark. And he went to Sri Lanka, and uh, he came upon the suttas, the, the, the discourses of the Buddha. And as soon as he ordained, he just took a Pali dictionary and he took a few of the books from the Nikayas and he just went to the jungle and he learned uh, the teaching like that. And he was very, very well learned and versed in uh, the Buddha's discourses in the original Pali. And that was one of the things that really motivated me to go to that monastery and um, a bit follow in his, his foot, footprints in, in that sense. Unfortunately, he passed away not too long ago. But it was really inspiring to see a monk who was completely dedicated to the Buddha's words and studying Pali and learning the original language and the teaching of the Buddha. As some of you might know, the, the teaching has been passed down now for nearly 2,600 years, and that's a long time to be passed down. Of course, there will be additions over the years, like commentaries, sub-commentaries, the Atakatta, the Tikka, and uh, all of the other like opinions of all the ver the very vast spectrum of teachers, and sometimes it's a bit confusing. Uh, we can get lost a little bit in the the sea of different divergent opinions. But when we go back to the suttas, we go back to the original wisdom of the Buddha. So this is very important, and we need to keep this alive. And this is what we are hopefully doing. Uh, by going back to the original texts. Uh, and 
तर ते त्यांना भारी आवडलं म्हणजे आपल्या कंपनीला आणि मग कंपनी पण तसंच ते करण्यासाठीच म्हणजे एक वर्षावर श्रीलंकेत राहिले आता बुद्ध वचन हे सुतांमध्ये स्पेसिफिकली म्हणजे आपल्याला माहित आहे की तिथे अर्थकथा आहे टीका आहे पण ओरिजिनल बुद्ध वचन जे आहे ना सुतांमध्ये जरी ते दोन हजार सहाशे वर्ष झाले त्याला तरी जी मेन कोर टीचिंग आहे बुद्धांची ती कशी सुतांमध्ये आहे आणि ती आपल्याला कशी समजली पाहिजे ते सांगण्यासाठी Very good. Bahu Pacha. I didn't understand. I'm sure it's very good. <laughs> Excellent. <clears throat> so, uh, last time I was here, I talked a bit about my favorite uh, sequence that comes up in Pali. And um, I think maybe I'll start with a quiz, a little quiz. And I'll read a little section and. Um, Maybe you can tell me where that's from, which sutta that's from. And please forgive me if uh, my, my Pali accent is, you probably have a much better uh, accent than I do. Uh, this is not my first language, so. <laughs> or, or close to it, but I'm trying, so. Tasime panche ni varane pahine attani samanupassato Pamo jang jayati Pamuditasa piti jayati piti manasa kayo kasambati pasadda kayo sukhang vedetti sukhino chittam samadhyati Any idea where that is found? Which yeah, sukha? Yeah. They have heard it. Ah, yes, they have. It's in the it's in the Diga Nikaya. Where they uh, hear regularly is we have a Dhatu Puja. Yes. In that Dhatu Puja, it is every you know every uh, uh, Buddha is teaching Mahanama yes. how to uh, you know, do the Anusati. Yes. I think with every Anusati it takes that. Yes, yes. Iti Jayati, Iti Manasa, Kayo, Kasambati, Basanta Kayo, Yes, yes, good, very good. Adhola, we are Everybody, Sabat Chahi. Okay, everybody knows. Okay, so uh, the only difference here is in, in these suttas, the Mahanama and the Upasata Sutta to Visaka, and a lot of lay followers, Upasakas and Upasikas. Uh, he will explain the Buddha Nusati, the Dhamma Nusati, Sangha Nusati, uh, Chaga Nusati, Chaga Nusati, uh, uh. <laughs> Good, good. And then he says, then this brings Pamoja. There, there, there is Pamoja arising, right? the gladness. And there's also when the five hindrances are abandoned. So it's the two, there's two possibilities where the, where the Buddha usually uses that sequence. So it's either with the Anusatis or when he explains his whole path, he will say when the hindrances are abandoned, then this arises, the seven supports of awakening, the Satta Bhojanga. So. <laughs> I chose this particular sequence because I want to bridge today the study of the suttas and the direct practice of what the Buddha taught. And I want to uh, 
also um, underline the importance of when we translate the suttas, we need to experience these things for ourselves as well, because then this really will influence how we read the suttas also. Every translation, whether it's going to be in English, whether it's going to be in Hindi or in Marathi, so whatever language we're going to translate the Pali into, and this is our, you know, this is what we do here, our own perspectives and experience will be reflected in these translations, in the way that we understand the teachings. People who practice one-pointed concentrations will see one-pointed concentration, will try to find one-pointed concentrations in the suttas. People who practice a broader kind of open awareness will find, will be influenced by that practice. So, it is really important for us to um, to understand the impact that what we practice um, and the, how it impacts the way that we understand the, the Buddha's teachings. One of the places that I've noticed, because we're, I'm talking about meditation here and how it influences uh, our, the way that we perceive the texts, uh, one of the sequence that is the most, one of the most important and seen a lot over and over and over again in the suttas is this one. So we witche wa kamehi, we witche we witcha akusalehi dhammehi savitta kang savicharang we vaika jang piti sukkang patama jana upasampaja viharati and so what what is the sequence quiz test yeah i claim that this is also in the dhat no one this is very good. They, 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 they listen to Dhatu uh, Puja. They have been listening to Dhatu Puja since so long. So all this day is there in the... Yes. Because it is meditation. Na? So yes. Always, Mm -hmm. they, yes. They know. Yes. It's a bit of a challenge for me to give this talk because I mean I don't speak Marathi, so <laughs> and I wish I could bridge a little better, but the, all the material I have is uh, English, yes. no, English and Pali. It's okay. okay. Because they know Pali, if you tell them in Pali, mm -hmm. they understand. Yes. I I just pre I just um, got a few different translations from that really sequence to explain uh, how different it can be uh, when, we, when we read Pali and when we translate it, everybody has the very different uh, perspectives and sometimes it's, it's interesting to 
compare. lucky because uh, it's really close to your native language so there's a lot of connections and it's a lot easier to understand although a few words are, are might be uh, quite different but um, it's, it's quite wonderful and that's a bit what my my challenge here in giving this talk is because uh, there's all these components so I don't think I'll, I'll go into my original uh, plan but we can uh, explore a bit more um, that, that very sequence, um, when, even though you don't read a translation, for you to understand what the Buddha is saying, you need to take the meaning from somewhere, right? Usually that's from a, da, a dictionary. Yeah. yeah. As a Pali translator and a just lo lover of the Buddha's words, uh, I spend clearly a lot of my time in the Pali English dictionary. Um, I don't know what the situation in Marathi and Hindi is. No, uh, they also, you know, for uh, translation, they will be using these Devi's only. Yes, right, Devi's, yes. Okay. So, oh, okay, so that, that's pretty good. Yes. And then I know what to say. And they do OCBS <laughs> level 1, level 2. Yes, uh, very good, very good. They're good courses. <laughs> With uh, Richard Dumbridge. Uh, everybody yes. knows. So, and that, that's wonderful, and that, that, that dictionary is quite, quite a gift. Uh, very well, uh, very, you know, uh, very uh, profound, a lot of uh, analytical knowledge about the etymology as well, and Sanskrit, and um, although for, in English, it's, it's a little bit, it's starting to be a little bit old, in yeah, 19. Yes, there's a few, yes, yes. For example, well, just just the word uh, viveka. What what does uh, what does it bring for you? What does the word viveka uh, mean in, for you in Marathi or maybe in Hindi? Viveka ya shabda cha artha kay tumcha sa. Viveka. 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 Yes, detachment. Oh, very good, very good. Ah. 
separation also. So what would separation? Separation, yes. yes. Which? Yes. Yes. I know. Um, so, so we witche wa kamehi. What? What would that mean? Would that be um, basically separating ourselves or detaching, letting go, perhaps, of just? Engaging in the senses all the time, or something like that, something close to that. I was really happy when I went to uh, Sri Lanka and I started learning Singhala. Um, for them, Viveka Ganwa, Viveka Ganwa, it means actually taking rest. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, um, I was really happy to hear that because uh, it's really close to the relaxed step and it's really uh, pointing towards this Viveka that the Buddha taught and how it loops back into um, Pasambhayang Kaya Sankarang or Pasambhayang Chitta Sankarang. Is that familiar as well? Pasambhayang Kaya Sankarang, Pasambhayang Chitta Sankarang, Bodhisattva Kas, Bodhisattva Kas. They know everything. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So it's one thing to know the words when we when we read this, like the first jhana, for example, and that's another place where it's really interesting because the word jhana, for example, in English, it is being more and more translated as absorption, which is a commentarial interpretation. But the word jhana, as in Hindi or maybe in Marathi as well, uh, jhan simply means meditation, right? So uh, the, the word absorption comes closer to apana or apana. Apana. And that is where that translation is taken from, which is from a commentary. And now that people are taking that as a source, now they're starting to translate jhana even as absorption, which jhana simply means to meditate. <laughs> Another really interesting uh, point to, to bear in mind, and also then we can re remember, okay, so this Viveka. Viveka is, it, in this particular context, how do we detach? How do we detach from the engaging in the senses all the time? How do we detach from unwholesome states? Like, what are unwholesome states? Anger, hatred, jealousy, uh, also, the engaging in the senses all the time, wanting things constantly, there's no peace of mind. That, that's what these words mean. And when we know all the, the suttas, then we can have a, a good understanding of what these words mean. Like viveka, how does that happen? Is by tranquilizing the body and the mind. That's how we detach. But when we try to analyze each word just with a dictionary, then it can create some problems because we need to see the bigger picture. Mm -hmm. 
विवेक विवेक जे विवेका जन्म दिया कशापासन जन्म दिया कशा कशा सा जन्म दिया बरबर कशापासन सेपरेट वा जस संगित कि वेग कर स्वतः कशापासन वेग कर बरबर है ना मैं आप मेडिटेशन करता अपन स्वतः कशापस वेग कर So who's coming to the retreat? <laughs> who's coming to the retreat? Raise your hands who are coming to the retreat. Oh, yes, raise your hand. Oh, very good. Okay. Okay, good. I wasn't sure how many there would be. Ah, very good. Ah, wonderful. How do I say wonderful? I always say that word. Maybe I should learn that in Hindi. Wonderful. Yes, wonderful. Oh, the okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, that's why I really uh, like to stay very close to the suttas. Uh, and, and in our tradition, uh, my teacher, Bhante Vimala Ramsey, used to really uh, stay close to the suttas, maybe not in Pali, uh, but in English. And at least we would study really closely to the suttas, uh, every discourse and every Dhamma talk, every... Uh, of the course of the retreats and that was really inspiring to me and that's why I also like to stay really close to the suttas um, in our retreats is more like um, it's a it's a kind of a fusion or a mix with direct meditation experience and also sutta study which is really uh, together when it's done very um, in, in, the, in the right manner it it is extremely conducive to understanding the Buddha's words. experience <laughs> I would uh, invite you because one of the lines of the Buddha is Ehi Pasiko. So I would just invite you to come and see for yourself. Mm -hmm. And 
So this is a really interesting place where we see the Viveka in action. And Viveka, as I explained, in our uh, tradition, we teach something we call the six R's. The six R's, obviously, there's mostly for English. I'm not sure of the Hindi translation. Ah, oh, uh, TK. Very good. That's a good group. <laughs> You've done a good job. Uh, the, first, the first R is to recognize and to recognize what is that the mind when it is distracted so the mind has gone away from the object of meditation or the resting place of awareness and uh, usually for us this is metta uh, at, the, at the beginning especially and so to recognize and then to release to release the, the mind's attention from that distraction so there's, there's release and then there's relax. And the release is mental, the relax is physical. So the release is not keeping your attention on the hindrance, to so just let it go. Not feeding your attention to it. Then relax the tension in your body because every time the mind is distracted, it wanders away it has a little bit of clinging in it and it's that clinging is also manifested in the brain and you can feel it in your brain so you relax that and then awareness opens up it relaxes and it becomes sampajanya Every, everybody knows sati sampajanya ah very good so know the word yes yes <laughs> you know the meaning also but i don't know whether the experience yes. is there <laughs> So like this, when the mind wanders and it's tight, there's no sati, no sampadan. But when we let that go, relax, then there's sati sampadan. Then is to re-smile. And this is piti bojanga. Piti bojanga. We don't, we don't just say smile just for fun. It's an actual factor of awakening. Well, it's also fun, but... Uh, <laughs> and then it's to return to your resting place of awareness, your vehicle of awareness. And that is loving kindness, metta, maitri. At this point, maitri is a very powerful conductor of awareness. So when there's maitri, when there's metta, there is no unwholesome state. There is no akusala dhamma. There is only kusala dhamma. So just doing that is very simple and it's very effective. So when we're walking, it doesn't really matter. Walking meditation is the same thing. The six senses will be operating, the salayatanas. Six senses will be active, yet we let go, we relax, release, and we rest our awareness in Maitri all the time. Whenever mind is pulled out of metta, six hours, resting back into the metta. As you're walking and as you're doing everything, that's chopping food, uh, cleaning, listening to your teacher, going home, walking meditation, same thing. Very good question. Loving kindness, Maitri. Mm -hmm. 
So basically, this is another kind of meditation. Yes. What happens when you note is that you're not actually six R. It's the opposite. You're not letting go. You're, you're not releasing and relaxing. When you put your attention on every sensation that you have, you have to understand this is endless. <laughs> Whatever sensations in your body you're trying to put your attention on, there's always going to be more, and there's only going to be deeper, and there's only going to be more sensitive. And if you take that route, you're basically practicing the opposite of what we're practicing. You're practicing to go in and to focus on and to hone in, whereas we're, we're teaching to open up the mind, releasing and relaxing. And so as you do this, you'll notice your whole body, perhaps, with the metta, for example, but you won't focus on any particular sensation. I, I know because I practiced this kind of meditation before in the past as well, and that is one of the things I noticed was that the more I focus on a particular sensation, a particular place, the more I note, the more I notice that there's a universe of more things that I could note and that I could put my attention and focus on. And that is just not, um, it's not letting go and it's focusing on a particular point. And that will narrow down the awareness, it will not it will not open it up into like a sampajanya, like an open awareness. So this is why there's a little bit of confusion, I think. I'm not here to, uh, to speak praise of one practice and the other. I'm offering my humble um, experience and practice in this. Uh, but yeah, I, so that it's clear, it's, these are two very different uh, approaches. Yes, <laughs> good, good. Are you coming to the retreat? Is she coming to the retreat? No. Ah. <laughs> Too bad. Next time. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Hope we'll see you soon. Okay. Mangal ho. Maitri muskurana he. Good. Okay. Take care. Sabitio viva jantu sabbaro go in a satu. Mate bhavat pantera yo suki digha yu ho bhava. Bhava tu sabha mangelang rakham tu sabha devata. Sabha buddha nu bhavena sabha dhamma nu bhavena. Sang sabha sangha nu bhavena sada sutti bhavantu te. Sukhyotu nikana pachyata.